Kai, I want to start with, with you. And if you could just explain how this program came to bear, what this means for Visa, and um, how this idea came about. Explain uh, to our audience what this actually means. Sure. So for the past decade, Visa is really focused on how we can digitally enable small businesses and help them participate in e-commerce. But the concept of a small business has evolved. You know, a lot of people still think about you know, brick and mortar, mom and pop shops. We're just seeing this new generation of you know, gig workers, solo entrepreneurs and creators. And so when we think about how can Visa support commerce in any form that it takes, we want to be an advocate, an enabler for this global creator economy. And so we looked at the NFT ecosystem and we felt this represents a new form of e-commerce. And so we started to closely follow the space you know, last year, became fascinated by it. And we felt for us to learn and participate, we have to get involved in the ecosystem. You know, we bought a CryptoPunk. You know, we started building relationships with individual creators. And when we met Micah, we were just super inspired about his story and really how it's a case study of what NFTs can enable. And so we started working closely with him. And now we're really excited to expand and open up this creator program so we can work with creators across the world to help them with NFTs. Got it. And we'll get into some of the details and um, you know what this means for Visa in the long run, uh, but Micah, you really do have such an interesting backstory. Retired from Major League Baseball in 2018 and then became a visual artist. How did you find out about NFTs and how did you get into crypto? Yeah, I, I got into it in, in, in late 2019 and uh, really found out about you know digital art and, and, and at that time, crypto art it was called, uh, because I needed a way to monetize my art. I couldn't get into a gallery at that point um, and gallery was really the only way that you know you could really sell visual art and so started looking into uh you know digital art crypto art uh late 2019 realized there was only like three or four articles on the internet at that time about nfts and it was incredible to see the you know where we are today um but then i, I released my first nft in like early 2020 and, and i've been uh, a collector that uh you know i just dm'd uh, you know twitter dm you know just to learn about the space and that's what i used to do early on was just ask a bunch of questions to the very few collectors that existed and he bought my first uh, NFT for three ETH. At that time, it was, uh, I think, 900 bucks. So ETH was at $300 each. And I, thought, I was like, this is revolutionary because now I've built a relationship with a collector. I have a direct connection with my collector. And he was like tweeting and, and talking about my art to other collectors. I said, this is something I've never seen before. A way, you know, somebody that is invested in, in, in my cre creativity that is now evangelizing, you know, the thing that I'm creating. And so like, I was hooked about, at that point and just continued to uh, build and, and create within the space. And tell us about Aku, that character, and you know why you chose to make that something digital and an NFT. You mentioned sort of the ownership and um, revenue model there. It's sold uh, over a million dollars so far. What are you seeing as far as the interest? And why does this work as an NFT? Why does it have to be um, a digital token or a non-fungible token in this case versus you know doing this in another digital form? Yeah, great question. I think for us, um, or for me in particular, you know, my story, you know, my paintings based around my nephew asking if astronauts could be black. And so I started painting him in an astronaut helmet and just showing him like I didn't have any gallery at that point. Uh, and as that caught on and I started getting representation, um, I realized I needed to reach a broader audience and animation is one way to do that and reach that demographic. And so I decided to create this character, like you said, Aku, um, and release it as an NFT because I knew that NFTs would enable me to create a collector base that can give me real time feedback about the story that I was you know, telling. Uh, but also uh, give me leverage and, and, and more importantly, to um, have ownership over my creativity. You know, Kai it talks about, you know, uh, small businesses, you know, um, being being created by, you know, people like myself, who is just a creator that has a mission and a story. And, um, you know, this we released Aku as, as a 10 part series, animated series. Um, never done anything like this in my life. Never done media in my life. Uh, we ended up doing uh, close to $16 million in, in, in primary sales over the last year. And I, as we speak, I'm in, a, I'm in a meeting right now developing uh, a feature film. And so like that all happened in a year uh, because of the, the, the audience base saying this is something that we want in the world. Um, and then being you know invested in this and, and not, I'm not in this alone. I got thousands of people who are supporting me. And, and, and Kai you know, has been here since day one and now you know, at a broader uh, 
partnership with Visa, like how can we do this and replicate this model where a guy can go from painting in his garage one year into making a uh, big budget film the next. And what are you seeing from um, other athletes or celebrities getting into NFTs? Uh, that seem, there seems to be a big intersection there uh, in terms of at least Hollywood and pro athletes moving into that direction. Are you getting a lot of outreach on that side? And uh, what has that looked like in the past year or so? No, of course, of course. And, I, and I'm always here to, to, to help educate. But I think, you know, I also am from a position, you know, what it takes, you know, we are running a business, you know, now you think about a business that uh, does, you know, $15 million in revenue, this is a real business, you know, I got nearly 40 people on my team now, you know, so this isn't like, I try to advise everybody, you know, this isn't just launch something really quickly, this needs to be thoughtful, and it needs to be from a position of why NFTs, and not just like, I, this is, I need to make money. Why NFTs was for me was because I needed to build leverage and build momentum for this story. Traditional sense, you know, I take my character Aku to Hollywood, they're going to own my IP and my job is done. I wanted to retain ownership so I can continue to drive value back to my audience. And so I think that's what's important about this program that we're doing together is like we're going to be able to educate even more creators about you don't just need to conform your art to digital art. It's more about how can you leverage the technology that exists on the blockchain to build an invested collector group or audience base um, that can be your marketing uh, engine. It could be your capital provider that allows you to continue to scale your infrastructure uh, and remain independent. And so that's what I always tell the athletes is like, they want to launch a project. I'm like, if you want to launch a project, you don't have to retire because this is what I do 24 seven. And Micah, as far as the, the sort of mentorship program and how this will work, uh, actually question for both of you, you know, how, how involved will you be on the day to day basis and what do NFT artists need, um, you know, from visa and, and from your mentorship, what, what would they expect to learn in, in a year long program like this? Yeah, so I'd say Micah really in, inspired you know this program and played a critical role in, in helping us design it. And we think there are really you know three key elements to this. And and first is we want to create a community of Visa creators and have you know people with experience like Micah connecting with people who are brand new to the space, trying to understand how to apply NFTs and leverage it, and then be able to work together to to figure this out. And then second is really you know mentorship, direct access to Visa. And the crypto product team, you know, there are a ton of questions around which blockchain should I use? You know, what about transaction fees and scalability and which marketplace? How do you compare you know, where to do a drop? And then we think we can learn just as much, if not more, from the creators as they can from us. And so this mentorship, you know, that's going two ways. And then last is connections to our network. And we have large brands and merchants coming to us every day saying, what, how do we get into NFTs? What should we do? And so we want to have this cohort of creators that we can use as case studies and also you know, help to connect them to our broader client base. So, Mike, is this something that you could have used in the early days uh, setting up your NFT project? Well, I think, you no, know, for me, like one thing that I had an advantage was I was early. And so there wasn't a lot of competition in, per se or, uh, or noise for, for attention. Right. It wasn't like the hottest market on planet Earth. And so I had the uh, opportunity to meet people like Kai and, and other people who have been in the space for a while and educate myself in a direct relationship. I think now with every single body, every single person and every single major brand and company with millions and not billions of dollars to pump into building out their NFT or Web3 ecosystem, the stakes are higher. And I think um, a program like this is very important so that we can curate, you know, top talent and, and, and really make it stand out. And then like to Kai's point, leverage their networks. Like we did an event in Miami, um, 30,000 square foot interactive exhibit during Art Basel, Aku World. Visa um, came in and sponsored the merch room and we created this incredible experience. I don't think it's ever been done where it was like we had holographic merch, like 3D digital merch that you could buy that was actually a physical product. And then Visa had Aku on uh, Visa debit cards within the exhibit. So. I think being able to give this opportunity to other people is, is that's really what I'm about is, is leaving the door open for other creators, other people behind me, so they can also, you know, take advantage of the same things that I have access to. And Mikey, you mentioned, you know, you were really early. It is the hottest market at this point. And in the past year or so, it's just gotten so much buzz. I mean, are you worried about any sort of bubble here or any slowdown in NFT sales? I'm not, I'm not worried about, um, 
the bubble being per se, because like what we're building is much bigger than that. I think anybody that, you know, is focused solely on, you know, NFTs, then I think there's a, a, um, a, a bigger, you know, you, you have to be able to build beyond, you know, uh, NFTs. NFTs are opportunity to get and build an invested collector base. And they continue to expand your business beyond, you know, into other verticals that you wouldn't have access to prior. And so um, I think there's also, you know, uh, I, I don't think it's a bubble, but I think as we continue to innovate and expand, there'll be more accessible ways for people to enter um, it within the space. Got it. And, and Kai, as far as how this fits into the broader visa picture, um, is that where you really see e-commerce going? NFTs and the metaverse, uh, if you want to take it a step further. But the idea that a lot of um, commerce, you know, will eventually happen not only online but um, really with digital collectibles and digital goods. Uh, walk us through sort of the long-term vision here and how it might, uh, you know, be a boost at some point for Visa. A absolutely, we think NFT commerce can really become a, a new generation of, of e-commerce. If you think about what is e-commerce today, a lot of it is, you know, purchasing physical goods online that are shipped to you. They have to be created in factories and go through supply chains and you have to manage logistics or it's just purchasing a digital subscription that's one size fits all. You don't really own, you can't resell, you can't really combine with other things. This is kind of a combination of the two. The NFTs have some of the same properties as physical goods. You could take possession, you can trade and sell them, you know, you could you know, build things on top of them, but they could also get you access to digital experiences, you know, as a membership. And so it's this kind of new hybrid form factor that we think can just be applied to many new use cases. And our goal is to discover what those use cases are. And then how do we enable them and make it more accessible for consumers where you shouldn't have to be an expert in understanding cryptocurrencies and blockchains to just be able to support one of your favorite artists or creators. And so there's a lot of work to be done as an industry to make it as easy to purchase an NFT as it is to buy anything else online today. Got it. I'm sure in the past year or so, there's a lot of people that would want to avoid these supply chain issues and just have <laughs> live in the digital world. Um, what will this program look like? I mean, is it sort of a boot camp? Uh, what do you envision here for some of the artists or musicians and creators that uh, you expect to join this program and, and to be a part of it? What should they expect? Yeah, so the way to think about it, it's, this is a, a one-year immersion program. You know, we're going to do this virtually. We're opening applications and we encourage, it's a call to creators across the world to apply. And we're really looking for, you know, what are the most unique new use cases that NFTs can apply to it? So a lot of people think about it as art, but what about music? What about fashion, photography, literature, dance? We don't know how NFTs could be used. And so we want to take really talented, creative people from across the world, bring them together into a small cohort you know, a virtual community, and then just start to work together and figure out, you know, what can we understand and how can we help them? And then have that inform Visa's product strategy and what we build and enable in the space. Got it. And Micah, same question to you. Um, you know, how involved will you be in this process? Do you expect any coaching and uh, mentorship on your side? What will your role be here? Yeah, I think that some guidance on like, you know, um, different ways the technology could be used, I think is important. Uh, I think looking beyond just like the medium, I think like you think about mediums, there's, there's, you know, canvas, there's paper, you know, there's t there's product, but like looking beyond that and really what the technology can do to uh, empower uh, creators and create like a, uh, an audience that is uh, uh, orchestrated around basically a token. And that's really what the technology allows. And so really just provide, providing some insight on, on how different ways they can leverage um, the technology, I think is what I'm really excited about uh, being integrated into this, into this program and kind of bringing my kind of like knowledge of that. 